Welcome to this edition of Locker Room Chat, brought to you by Shannon Sports Museum of Tacoma Pierce County and Rainier Asphalt and Concrete, the number one asphalt and concrete repair contractor in the Tacoma and Seattle area. For quality sportsmanship, workmanship, and top-notch customer service, contact Rainier Asphalt and Concrete at www.rainierasphalt.com and let them know that you heard about them on the Locker Room Chat. I'm Jay Strickers, your host today, and we are excited to have as our guest, Coach Bowden and several of the players from the Mount Tahoma High School football teams from 1979 and 1980 state championship football teams. So much has been said again, and then so much has not been said and talked about when we talk about the back-to-back -back Mount Tahoma High School state championship teams going 24-0 during the 1979 and 1980 football seasons. The stats are documented and success is there. Let's highlight some. Back-to-back -back state champs, first ever in the state of Washington. Phenomenally well-balanced teams, offense, defense, and special teams. 24 and zero over the two years. The greatest two year high school football history in the city of Tacoma. And that's not arguable, that's a fact. Stats of note from the 1979 season. Offense averaged 26 points per game. Defense gave up 71 total points in 12 games. Think about that, 71 points in 12 games, holding 16 scores. State playoffs started with a 12-0 win over Wilson High School. Then went to 48-0 over Central Kitsap and onto the closest game of the year versus Puyallup, with the T-Birds winning 16-13 behind the field goal kicking leg of Craig Meyer. Yep. T-Birds next faced arch rival Henry Foss and dominated by winning 28-0. A week later, it was Evergreen in a 21-7 victory. The 1979 championship games, Mount Tahoma versus Rogers of Puyallup. Coach Lee Brick's offense scored 37. Coach Bowden's defense gave up three points and allowed only 74 total yards. Behind a high school line consisting of John Hayward, Mike Young, Frank Hobbs, Brian Humphrey, and Victor Milton, Mike Bindovich was in on four touchdowns, rushing for one, catching a TD pass, turning a kickoff for six, throwing a TD pass to Daryl Harper. Vindy was named game MVP. The 1979 first team, all Narrows League team, offense was Brad Doble, guard Mike Young, fullback Donnie Moore, and running back Mike Bindovich. On defense, Todd DeCarterie, Malcolm Sorrell and Ken Baker. On to 1980, the season started with the change at quarterback. Brad Goble was out with the one back passing offense and Fred Baxter came in with the triple option threat. Once again, defense was dominant, dominant. As uh, they were giving up a very few, if any scores whatsoever during the year, defense, Regular season allowed only one touchdown. Think about that. The 1980 playoffs were highlighted by kicker Craig Meyer scoring a field goal with under three minutes remaining against Evergreen to ensure the T-Bird advancement. In the semifinal game at Richland, you guys all remember this, big game on the road. Hometown Bombers drew a crowd of around 8,000, and they fell behind 28-14. Bombers fought back, pulled within two late in the game. However, on a two-point try, Joel Harper came up with an interception to secure the win. Team injuries and a flu bug illness hit the team prior to the 80 championship game versus the Issaquah Eagles. Lacey Walker was so sick, he only practiced 10 minutes prior to the game. Star lineman Mike Young blew out his knee in a freak non-contact accident the day before the game. So what, said the T-Birds. Coach Liebert came up with a late field goal, fake field goal, 
in a pass by holder Mike Vindovich to Elaine Patton for the TD. And Vindy took one in from the 17-yard line on a fourth and one. The offense rolled and the defense did their job, allowing just 51 rushing yards in one completed pass. Think about that. 51 rushing yards and only one completed pass. T-Birds won again 21 to three, completing a perfect 12-0 season and back-to-back -back state championships. 1980 team had so many great players in great plays, it's almost impossible to highlight them all. All Narrows League honors go to Ramon Moore, Lacey Walker, Mike Young, Vindovich, Fred Baxter, Quinn Baxter, Maurice Hanks, Joel Harper, and Craig Meyer, with Lacey Walker and Mike Vindovich earning all state honors. That's the highlights of those two great seasons. We're going to go on to Coach Bouton here, who is with us, to uh, go ahead and say hello. And Coach, uh, maybe you've got a recollection or two of some of your best memories of these two seasons with these great high school Montahoma student athletes. Coach Bouton. I got a lot of memories. <laughs> I'd be here all morning, uh, but there are some that really re I remember. I can remember the first ball game against Rogers. At halftime, we were leading 23 to nothing, and uh, the team before us, Double A, had led 23 to nothing and got beat 24 to 23. And as we were walking off the field, uh, Coach Nordy turned to me and said. We got a 23-point lead. You see what happened before? I said, don't worry about it. No problem. Mike Vendovich takes the second half kickoff, 80-some yards for a touchdown, game over. And you, can't, you can't beat things like that. Uh, another interesting thing that probably nobody will ever remember in the, uh, the second game, we were giving up nothing. It was three and out, three and out, three and out, as you mentioned, but they only gave up 51 yards. But they got two first and tens all of a sudden. So I call a timeout, call the defensive coach over, uh, captain over, and I said, what are you guys doing? He said, well, coach, it's really boring. We get to play three downs, and then we got to come out of the ball game. So we let them have a couple of first and tens. I said, enough of that. We're not doing that anymore. Okay, I think that was the last first and ten they got during the whole ball game. So it was, I, I mean, I could, I could go on forever, but another one that is really memorable is Todd DeCarteret against Foss. Uh, Foss was coming down, it was nothing to nothing at the time. Foss was coming down the field. They're on about the 20-yard line, and Jack Sontag decides to uh, run a little option. He flips the ball out. DeCarteret picks it off in midair and runs 80 yards for a touchdown. End of ball game. I mean, that's that's the way these guys were. And I always said they were so quick, both teams. I don't know how many we had. We had seven or eight. George used to have you know, the statistics. They could run, I don't know, four, 30, four threes or whatever. Really quick team. We weren't big. Lacey Walker was the biggest on the team, and he only weighed about 220. But R Ramon Moore was so fast that uh, um, that Jack Sontag mentioned that the only way he could stop him was he told his guard to grab his jersey as he was going by. And he, of course, made All-State his senior year. And he only weighed 150 pounds. And I put him in there because he, I couldn't play him any place else. He wouldn't stay home. I tried him at de, in the defense backfield, and he said, nah, I, I got to come up. Okay. I tried him at defensive end. He was over on the other side of the field before the ball was snapped. So it was by mistake that I ever tried him at nose, and we couldn't even run a play in practice after that. He was, he was that quick. So there, there were so many – good stories and so many good every one of them was a good player i mean all 11 there wasn't a slug in a bunch they were great and both years and a lot of them played both ways so it was you know it was the greatest bunch of kids to 
coach I, I had ever had, and I'd coached a long time, and they were so easy to work with. You tell them to do something, boy, they did it. So I really didn't have to coach. I just said I threw the football out on the field and said, sick them. That, was, that took care of it. I think you're being awfully modest there, Coach. I, I know there was a lot of coaching going on, and uh, I think the amazing thing about these teams is that they were so well balanced. Phenomenal offense, phenomenal defense, and special teams. All three areas were just incredibly, incredibly strong. So, yeah, we didn't have a weak spot on that defense. Not not one weak spot. Yeah. I mean, every every kid, and and we had two or three on the bench that could come in and fill in. So uh, you, you just don't get that kind of group yeah. very often. It was just amazing. Well, Coach, I think there's 24 teams that would agree with your statement there because 24 of them went down to defeat to the Mount Tahoma T-Birds. We've got a number of athletes here with us today from the team, and let's go ahead and hear from, the, from these guys. Just like to meet the fellows that are with us, please introduce yourselves. Tell us what position that you played uh, back in the day. If you went to junior high school in Tacoma, you can mention that. Tell us where you're at now. And if you have a memorable memory of uh, these two great seasons, uh, feel free to go ahead and share that with us. And let's start with Ken Baker. Ken, you're on. Hey, how you doing? Well, Ken Baker, I played uh, defensive tackle and I played fullback back in the day. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And I went to Baker Junior High, you know, and I played, you know, Harper's Angels back in the day, and I did all that good stuff. Eastside Boys Club, a lot of guys on the team were part of the Eastside Boys Club program. So it was kind of cool playing with those guys for so many years. Um, the memory that I, re I remember the most, it was I was playing on the same side as Todd Barnett against Foss. And so this was a great conversation we had. One of the things that uh, Dr. I mean, uh, Coach Bowden would tell us was, hey, you make sure that you take the pitch man. Take the pitch man, and then we'll force it with, and I'll hit the quarterback. And Todd said, hey, the pitch is so slow, I can grab this pit. I said, well, shit, ain't stopping it. Go for it. And he grabbed the pitch and ran it back for 80 yards. And that was it, man. That was like a dagger in their heart and that, so. It was, it was a lot of fun. Was, that team was a lot of fun. A lot of good friends on that team. People that I still see to this day. So it was a good time. Wonderful. Thanks, Ken. Mm -hmm. Scott Nordy, you're up next. Scott, we know, is the son of uh, George Nordy, longtime coach of Mount Tahoma, who uh, we certainly miss. But, uh, Scott, any recollections you have? And uh, tell us about what's going on in your life. Well, uh, Scott Nordy, and, and I uh... – Played a defensive end and tight end. Um, uh, went to Truman Junior High over in the north end. You know, and Wilson was my home school I was supposed to go to, but I, I wanted to play for my dad. I didn't want to. I wanted to keep the home front peaceful and then not uh, have conflict at home. So uh, I opted to go to Mount Tahoma, and that was probably the best decision that uh, I could have ever made. I have lifelong friends uh, from Mount Tahoma now, and. Um, you know, can't, uh, can't say enough about the opportunity to play for my dad. Um, and, but really I didn't play for my dad. He, the one thing he did is he let his assistant coaches coach and, and they made the decisions at their position. So, um, while we carried the same last name and the people might have thought, well, you, you get this because of your dad, it, it was the assistant coaches and they, they made the decisions as who, who was going in and when they were going. And Maury would uh, attest to that, I'm sure. Thank you, Scott. You betcha. Next up, Dirk Pettit. Dirk. Greetings. Uh, Jay, your, your introduction was fun to listen to that and brought, brought back some great memories. And even a few chills come up my spine. Um, I was fortunate to play for both the state championship teams. I started playing football at Baker Junior High. My eighth grade year, I went to the East Side Boys Club and played for Harper's Angels, which was a great experience that uh, reinforced the, uh, the game for me and taught me a lot. And then uh, back to Baker my ninth grade year and then on to Mount Tahoma. 
I was an offensive guard and played a little defensive line. And I, a couple of good memories uh, as I've been thinking about this, this chat was uh, grid go round our senior year. So the 1980 season, we were in stadium bowl. Mike had scored a touchdown. Craig came in for the extra point and said, okay, I'm going to put this one in the bay. So over the hill it went and we never saw that ball again. <laughs> and then uh, my junior year, so Ken's senior year, um, Lincoln Bowl was our, our home field and we had the old rickety bus that was stationed at Mount Tahoma. We would take that to and from the games, but Angelo Suarez uh, would start singing the Queen song, Another One Bites the Dust, as we come up out of uh, Lincoln Bowl with another win. And uh, I think we did that for both seasons. And so it was, it was great and great memories. So thanks for having us here today. You bet, Dirk, thank you. Let's move on to Mike Vindovich. Michael, you're up. I think Michael's going to go and get Julie to help out. Why don't we go ahead and move on to Craig Meyer? Craig, you and Michael go way back. Let's hear from you, and we'll get back to Mike in a minute. Craig okay, Meyer. that sounds good. Yeah, um, Craig Meyer, I was the uh, punter and kicker, and uh, went to Baker as well, which a lot of, uh, a lot of players fed their way up that are – part of the, the team that you mentioned. And uh, I remember, first of all, starting in junior high, losing to Stewart uh, in a, a big game as far as junior high. And a lot of the Stewart players, um, like Fred Baxter and all that, and there were some others that went to, decided to go to Mount Toma. So that, uh, that kind of strengthened us uh, as a powerhouse. So that was, that was kind of fun. Um, my memory, well, first of all, from the kicking and uh, punting standpoint, especially the kicking, uh, you know, as the years went by, I'd, I'd watch college football and they would, uh, you know, you'd either see the guy make the long one and like, you know, be the hero or sometimes miss the short one in overtime or whatever and kind of be the goat. I was kind of in, in between. Our team was so good that uh, the few times that I was really called on, they, uh, they weren't like these long 50 yarders or something like that. So they were just mid-range and I made them and, uh, but I didn't miss them either. So uh, as your staff say, the team was so good that uh, that's kind of it. Now, I, the, the weird memories, cause we got so many is the one I was reflecting on is I remember our, uh, our semifinal game in uh, our first year when Ken was still on the team. My brain kind of thinks I was on the field when we were only up 14-7 and he broke free for the touchdown that won us the game, and I was so happy. But why would I have been on the field is what I'm still trying to figure out. So Ken's going to have to uh, remind me, was I, am I like, you know, did he score just on a normal handoff, and I'm just trying to think I was on the field, which made no sense, or did we do some kind of trickery, like a fake? Anybody so. help Craig on this one? Well, let's keep thinking about it. We know there was a, <laughs> at least yeah. one fake field goal in there that ended up being a, being a score for the T-Birds back in the day. Thank yeah, you. we had a couple of those, but thank you. So go ahead, Mike Vindovich. Did I say my name? Sure. <laughs> okay. My name is Mike Vindovich, and um, I play with those teams. And I think the thing about those teams that I think Coach Bout mentioned was how much speed we had with those teams. Uh, I remember we, our kickoff team, they rarely got past the 20 yard line, if, if 15 yard line, how much speed we had with those teams. Um, thinking back on those days and it's going back a ways, um, just the camaraderie but with the guys you played with, I think the most enjoyable thing for me in all those years was the bus rides. Um, either you were there or you weren't and the guys that were there understood what went on during those bus rides. And uh, I think it was probably the most, when I look back on, on the times you laugh in li life, those are the times that I laugh the most in my life anyway. And um, the games were great. Of course, we went a lot of games and a lot of highlights uh, over the years, but um, I'm really looking forward to getting together with these guys and uh, on the 23rd of August and uh, sharing some memories together and, uh, all the times that we had from, I went to Baker with uh, and played Eastside Boys Club with Harper's Angels, with, uh, Kenny 
and uh, Dirk and Craig. We, we grew up, Craig and I were next door neighbors growing up. So there's a lot there. It was a, it was a great time in college, in uh, high school sports. I uh, think back that Foss won the 75 title. Mount Toma played for the title in 74, and of course we won in 79-80. So it was a great time for uh, high school sports in Tacoma. Uh, and uh, we all played against each other growing up. I know a lot of guys now, they have, they have uh, select things, but we played all the sports together. So uh, being with the, the guys again and, and uh, what we did as a, as a team was really special. And 40 years later, I think it's even more special. Maybe 20 years ago, I wouldn't have felt the same way, but now that we're that this far away from uh, what we did, uh, I'm, I'm really proud of, of being part of that and being part of something bigger than myself. Amen. Thank you, Michael. That captures, I think, the spirit of uh, just about everybody here on, on the team. So let's go ahead and go into some, uh, some general questions, guys. And I'm going to throw a few out here. Anybody would like to respond, go ahead. A uh, number of you mentioned growing up in Tacoma, doing your Pop Warner uh, football, junior high football. Seems like that was a big part of the competitiveness and of your desire to go on to high school and to really make something different happen. For anybody want to talk about those experiences and how important you think you remember those all being in your development and getting to the point where you could be as competitive as you ended up being when you hit high school? Anybody? I think Kenny Baker, I think you were talking a little bit about who you played the youth sports with. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that and the junior high and the competitiveness of all those, uh, those activities. Sure, you know, I, uh, I grew up with, you know, four brothers, so I always played sports around them. You know, my um, older brother was part of that boss team that won the state championship his senior year, Wyatt Baker. So I was around football a lot. Um, you know, a lot of my friends were, um, Playing football when I when I first played football, I was a little bigger than most of the other kids. I played on a team that was coached by um, Ken Baines, and we were the smallest group of kids. We our helmets were bigger than we were, you know, but we could hit. That's all he cared about. We had two plays. We only ran two plays, but he said you just had to hit the other team so hard that they wouldn't want to play anymore, and so. We would hit them so hard, a lot of those teams would quit at halftime and wouldn't, wouldn't want to play us anymore. So, but we only had two offensive plays. We either swept, we got a sweep to the right or a sweep to the left. And the defensive formation we had varied depending on who wanted to hit the guy the first, you know. So it was interesting. Um, but I met a lot of good friends. It was such a good time back in those days. Um, but like I said, I grew up with a lot of, a lot of people around in my family playing football, playing sport, you know, and it was real easy. I knew the Harpers really well. They were my neighbors, Rel, Kevin, Joel, all those guys. So we all played together. All the time. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> I think we all would agree that the junior high football in your era was something uh, to behold. I definitively remember uh, refereeing a, a game between Stewart and uh, also Baker. And the, the fact was that one team hadn't scored yet. And at the end of the game, uh, the other team, Baker, was not going to let Stewart even score, even though they were ahead by multiple touchdowns. It was just a fact of we've got this pride. They're not going to score on us. And I was amazed by the competitiveness and the drive that both teams had in junior high football. Anybody else? Junior high growing up memories as you want to share before we move on to another question. Jay, I'll jump in a little bit. We've, we've talked about uh, Harper's Angels and the Eastside Boys Club. The, the Harper family was incredible and what they gave to youth and specifically youth football was amazing. Uh, Ken played for them, Mike did, Craig did, I did. There are many others on these teams. The habits that they instilled in us, the knowledge that they gave us, just led us to where we were. Um, so I think a lot, a lot of my success um, and a lot of our team success is due to the Harpers. Amen. Thank you I much. Agree. I agree with Dirk. What Dirk has to say about the John and Harry, you know, kind of like fathers to me growing up, and. Uh, uh, 
you know, when, you, when you're trying to keep people, it's difficult to keep kids on the straight and narrow, whatever that kind of is, but those guys, uh, leadership and um, uh, the love they showed and, uh, and just being, showing you how to be a person you want to be. When I think about them, I think that those are the, the kind of uh, role models that I had, and I, uh, I can't say enough about those two. Amen. I think everyone values the life lessons that uh, that uh, all of us that were athletes at one time or another, uh, you know, would carry with us uh, from those days uh, moving forward. So well stated, guys. Uh, how about a team? Is there a team that uh, that you felt was the best team you ever played going 24-0? Uh, was there a team that you kind of got uh, fired up to, uh, to make sure that when you played, you were ready to play? Anything Foster. you want to respond to that one? Henry Craig, Foster. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Excuse sorry. me. Um, Mike, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Craig. I'll defer to you. Go ahead. No, no. I, I, I was calling I was you. I didn't see Craig. My fault. <laughs> okay. I'll be Definitely the Foss Falcons. Um, I know a lot of guys were wrestlers, and a lot of our wrestling was just such a big sport in junior high school. And uh, we played Foss, that was always a battle. Fortunately, we won most of them, but it was always, they were the, our rivalry when we were in high school, and it was always great to play Foss because we knew we were going to be in a tough game. And um, it was just, that was, for me anyway, that playing Foss was always, always the, uh, uh, the, 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 the games of the year for us. Anybody else? Well, the, actually, the toughest game that we had was uh, the semifinal game in Richland with the Spokane team. Um, we won it 28 to 26 because we were ahead. We had all this speed, and we scored four touchdowns in the first half. We're ahead 28 to 14, and I told George at halftime, I said, you better score some more points because this team's good, and we're not going to hold them to the, the zero in the second half, and we didn't. And they scored a touchdown right before the end of the game, and we're going to go for two points. And I called timeout. I went in and said, uh, they're going to give it to that running back up the middle. He'd been killing us all half. And uh, sure enough, quarterback, instead of handing it off, dropped back to throw the ball, and our linebacker, stepped in, Harper, stepped in front of it, picked it off. And that was the end of the ball game, 28 to 26. And their coach said after the game, he said, this should have been the state championship game. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you would agree with that, Coach. Uh, coach yes, Bob. I would. I remember that era? We all know how important home field advantage is in all sports, particularly collegiate and in the pros. And when that game came up where Mount Tahoma was going to go to Richland, and play there, it was one that I think every got everybody's antenna up a little bit more uh, to see. Now we're really going to find out what uh, what Mount Toma has, and uh, what a great game it was, Coach. You bet. Uh, was there a time, guys, when you thought nobody's going to beat us? Uh, what did you <laughs> realize you were really as good as you were? Did it come? You know, early on in the, the 79 season, did you get through 79? Was there ever that feeling amongst you? Or was it just uh, go to work and uh, get ready for the next team and we'll see what's going to happen? Thoughts on that one from anybody? Well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a couple things here. When we played our junior year, so that would be um, 78, we played in a playoff game against, I think, Bremer Tenors. And uh, we lost that game. And we shouldn't have lost that game. We thought we were a better team. We made some mistakes, and we talked about it as a group. And I think that that's it. We're, gonna, we're not going to lose again. We made some mistakes, and the mistakes got us, and the team beat us. And after that game, we just we focused on getting better, smarter, and more disciplined. And that's what we needed, to be a little bit more disciplined. And we knew we could do it. So we worked our butts off. I mean, we hit the weight room. We did everything we needed to do. And we jailed as a group of people. It's really good men on that team now, you know. That's what I remember. Really good people all the way across. So, um, yeah, it was, it was an experience that um, I, to this day, still, still remember having that conversation that we're not going to lose again. Because we made the mistakes. We lost because we made the mistakes. 
Anybody no. else? I'll, I'll I'll jump in there. Jump in there a little bit. Um, I don't know that we knew we were good. Our, our coaches did a good job of keeping us focused on the tax task at hand. We, uh, you know, we would talk about games that would be coming up, and they would keep us focused. No, it's this week. We need to be focused on this week. Um, it was fun, you know, we were playing with our friends, we were playing with people that we, with guys that we had been through school with from, you know, elementary, junior high, high school. Um, we weren't big, I mean, Ken was big, Lacey was big, we had some big guys on the team, but uh, coaches did a nice job of keeping us disciplined and focused. I think that was a lot of our success. If I can say one thing, I, I remember in, in 79, we went down to the University of Oregon uh, camp, a lot of us. And I remember um, Coach Norty had this really nice uh, light gray Cadillac. And so he drove us down to Eugene and um, <laughs> the nicest ride I ever had. The car was so nice and, and quiet and it, way it, it ran. And so we had uh, that camp there, I think, was a big deal for us because we spent a week with most, a lot of the guys there. Uh, special team guys mostly, but um, you kind of could get a feeling at that point there's something special was on the horizon, and uh, uh, I think that momentum just kept, took us through. Uh, uh, was part of why we were as good as as we were. Amen. Well, I think uh, Scott uh, uh, spoke to this very very well. I think it was the first time we truly had in high school athletics in Tacoma a head coach and a real offensive coordinator and a real defensive coordinator. And those two parts of the, the team, uh, you know, did what they did uh, enormously well. And of course, we all know special teams is always very, very important there also. I'd like to say something about George for a minute. And it's, it's really a shame that he's not with us today. George and I coached his assistants before he got the head job. And when he got the head job, he gave me the defense and he wanted to know where we could get a good offensive coordinator. And we got Lee Brick, who was my assistant at Jason Lee, to come out. But he was, there couldn't have had anybody greater to work with. George gave us the opportunity to do our thing. He said, here, you take the defense, you coach it, he did add that I wasn't supposed to do anything stupid and not tell him, uh, but he, he gave me a big range to work with and he was absolutely super. And he, I don't know whether he gets enough credit or not, but he should. Great, thank you. We know the uh, home field at Mount Tahoma High School now bears his name, George Nordy Field. And it should. You bet. So uh, lessons learned, guys. You know, with, uh, with great thrills come uh, sometimes uh, downsides, some agonies, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. You never, you never experience a defeat, but we know in life uh, things aren't all rosy. Uh, 40 years since you guys were in high school playing together. Anybody have any life lessons you can think about that you took from being a part of uh, this team? Uh, Mount Tahoma High School in that era, with your coaches, uh, with your fellow teammates that you think has uh, helped you get through uh, uh, life's challenges and life's uh, thrills uh, in the last 40 years. Anyone want to speak to that one for us? Ken, you're smiling. <laughs> I always... Yeah, the things that I learned from Coach Alden, you know, the things that still carry on. When I was coach, I coached at Foss for a while, and I hear myself saying things to the kids, the exact same things that Coach Mountain did. So it was, it was like, what is going on? You know, and same thing like with my parents, you know, raising my kids. I hear my, my father and my mother coming out of my mouth, I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to. So uh, there's a lot of people that made a difference in my life. Coach Bowden, Norty, the Harpers, you know, John and Harry, all those guys made a big difference in my life. And I tell you what, to this day, I just try to, you know, 
try to do the same. I want to pay back. I want to give back to the same, do the same thing daily. So, okay. yeah. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? So, uh, with all of the hard work and time and effort you guys put in going 24 and 0, there had to be some pretty good serious humor at times, I would think. Things that happened uh, on the field, uh, around the schoolhouse. I uh, have to believe that your school was very, very excited about, uh, about the, the thrill of all the, uh, the wins that uh, you had and the, and the records that you guys were, uh, were putting into the record books. But uh, humor in a part of uh, the game of football. Anybody have any humorous things or fun things that you can think of that uh, your teams did or you fellas did with one another that, uh, that helped you along the way? Mike kind of already, Mike already kind of spoke to it, but those bus rides, <laughs> nobody was safe on the bus rides. Um, yeah. <laughs> when, when, uh, when, when the, when the, your mama jokes started going and, and there was nobody safe on those bus rides. So Scott, I assume you're talking after the game, not on the way to the game. Uh, definitely after the game on the way to the game. I don't think there was, you could have heard a pin drop in the bus. It was silence all the way there. Anyone else? Humor. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> when we uh, won the King Bowl in 79, we had this kind of get together at Donnie Moore's house afterwards. It was a pretty epic party celebration. Of, and so anybody, I, I see people smiling going, yep. <laughs> I'm not sure that was, we we're supposed to do that, but you know what? <laughs> we did it anyway. Yeah. You bet. Anyone else, guys? We're getting close to uh, to wrapping up here with a few memories of uh, some of the people that we have uh, you have lost along the way. But uh, last chance here to weigh in with a thought or two of a question that I didn't bring up that you think I should have brought up and should have asked or could have asked. Anyone else? Well, I have one thing about the bus ride, and, and uh, Mike was so right about the bus ride. There was one particular player that made those bus rides just, I just sometimes almost pee my pants. It was Angelo Suarez. Oh my God. That guy was so funny. The things that came out of his mouth, you would just look at him and go, really? And yeah, it was um, those bus rides home after we win, of course, after, after the game, yeah. you know, was, was really, really fun. Good deal. Can I say one more thing on that? I'm sorry to jump in. Can I say one thing about Angelo? Absolutely. So Ange Angelo probably led the state in penalties yardage that when he was playing. <laughs> he did. So I remember, uh, I remember, because uh, a lot of guys call me Vinny, and they, so they were, Angelo, they were going back and forth, back and forth, and said, Angelo, you have more yards and penalties than Vinny's got rushing. <laughs> so, so that's the one I remember a lot from. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The defense didn't give up too many yards rushing. <laughs> right. Well, it's amazing, Coach, looking at those stats, what your defense did not allow other, other teams to do. Well, what I was most proud of is the kids gave up a total of three points in two championship football <laughs> games against two very good teams. Yeah. And, uh, you, you, that just doesn't happen. You know, you've got to have the, you've got to have a really great bunch of kids working together, and uh, nobody hogged the, hogged the, what was going on. Everybody did what they were supposed to do. They were so easy to coach. As I mentioned, it was really, it was really fun to coach them, and they were a great bunch of kids. Yeah, you bet. Uh, we're getting close to wrapping up here, guys. We'll do a final final in a minute. But uh, Coach Bowden, we know we have a few coaches that are not with us anymore. If you have, uh, you'd like to recognize them, so at least we can uh, put on our podcast that we're thinking of uh, coaches that are not with us today that were certainly a big part of this team. Well, there's, of course, uh, Dan Gurash, uh, who uh, actually coached well, he coached the JVs at the time, but 
and did all our scouting for us. And Mike Doubt Deutsch was uh, the other coach. Uh, Lee Brick, of course, was was the offensive coordinator. And uh, basically, there may have been one more, and I was trying to remember who it was. But uh, it, it was a good group. We worked. You couldn't have had a bunch of guys to work with better than our coaching staff. And as I said before, George was absolutely fabulous to work for. Couldn't have had a better head coach. You bet. Kenny? Colin, you do uh, recognize a few of the uh, the players here that are not with us uh, well, today. Well, you know, uh, Todd Carteret, uh, he, he's not here today, and he passed away. I'm sure if he was here, he would be on this podcast. And Todd was an amazing person, and he worked so hard. He was the quietest guy you would ever be. He wouldn't say much at all to you. Boy, could he play for him. Boy, could he play the game. He understood the game, and he was a student of the game. So it was really nice um, <clears throat> having him on my outside, you know, as a defensive end. If I made a mistake, he cleaned it up. So it made me look good at times. And then Bill, uh, Bill Moody. I, I, I don't remember as much about Bill because I think he was only with us for maybe a season, I think. But, uh, yeah, he, he's also not with us. And then also Joel Harper. Joel Harper, um, Kevin Harper and I were pretty good friends. And Joel is uh, Kevin's younger brother. And Joel would always just tag along with us, say, hey, you know, I'm going to take your position. Because Kevin Harper played middle linebacker. Joel Harper played middle linebacker. He always told Kevin, the older brother, I'm going to take your position. And they always had a little joke about that, always played around with that. And it was a lot of fun hanging out with those guys. So those guys are missing. They're truly missed. Um, I wish we would have um, had these guys here today. So I really miss all those guys. Yeah. Along with because, the coaches. Uh, uh, Jody Jacobson was also a player yeah. who was on the team that's uh, not with you now. And uh, yeah. Yeah. all of them were a big, big part of your success, certainly. So, uh, guys, we're going to run down this one more time here. Just a final, final thought that you might have. Uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, Dirk Pettit. Dirk? Final, final thought. Final, final. Uh, a great time, great memories. Um, being here with, with these guys, friends, teammates is wonderful. Uh, seeing Coach Bowden. I, one quickly, one, uh, one practice we had that was called Bowl in the Ring. I don't know if you guys remember that. And I don't think Bowden liked me because I would be in the ring and he would always throw the ball to Ken. And Ken would just hand me my lunch. And I couldn't get out of the ring until I tackled him. And one time when he was running right over the top of me, I wrapped myself around him and actually brought him down on top of me. So um, yeah, good memories. I'm not sure that they were fun, but good memories. You bet. He got a lot better. <laughs> uh, Scott Nordy, final, final thought. Uh, I, I think – this this group this team was was a team that played bigger than they were um and and just such a great group of, of people and and i know that my dad would would say that uh it was the players and the coaching staff um that, that deserved all the credit and and he's right that uh, these guys that that we went and did this with um played bigger than they were and, and went on to do some real great things and, and are, are really good people. And that's, you know, lifetime friendships for sure. Thank you, Scott. Let's go to Craig Meyer. We got you muted, Craig. There you yes, go. Uh, you know, I was just thinking as when you did the stats again, and again, I, I kind of think of us now as, you know, we were kind of the current day Alabama. Um, I mean, the offense and defense is so good that, you know, I just was a special teams that you don't, I don't think anybody can say what Alabama's done special teams in the last five years. <laughs> get it done. Thank you, Craig. Michael, you're up. Well, it's nice to hear a lot of these uh, memories people have, stuff I haven't thought in probably 40 years, a lot of them. Um, I do miss the guys that aren't here with us. Todd and, and Jolie and Bill and, and Jody. Um, but, you know, we have something here that we did 40 years ago. 
and uh, the ties that bind us together, whether we're in Texas or California, wherever we, wherever we may be in our lives, we've got this thread between us, all of us, that uh, cannot be broken. I'm very proud to be part of these teams, uh, the coaches, the players, the cheerleaders. My sister was one. Uh, this, uh, all the in the student body that was part of big part of what happened back then, and uh, very proud to be part of that. And um, um, I, I just can't say enough about the ties that bound us together for all these years. Thank you, Michael. Give and me. you will notice that most of them have gone on to be very successful out of that team. And I think that sport and those times really contributed to that. Amen. Those are the life lessons, Coach, that uh, right. athletes take on uh, with them from high school sports to, uh, to the real life. You bet. Ken Baker, final uh, thoughts. Yes, final thoughts. You know, it was an amazing ride. And uh, like Mike said, we're, we're tied together. You know, we're always going to be there for each other. At the end of the day, you know, I, I had a time of my life. And it was fun. And, you know, playing college football and all the things we did in college. And we had some good times in college. My high school days, by far, was my funnest days. You know, I had some great times with some great people. And, Dirk, I do remember that whole thing. And I believe Coach Bowden <laughs> did say, um, run them over. <laughs> I don't know. That's, I think he said that. I'm not sure. But, um, and yeah, I think he did, time. Ken. <laughs> It was a great time. It was so fun and just good people. Everybody was just good people. And so I, I really did it for myself. And it was a great time. You bet. Coach Bowden? Well, thank Final you for, for doing this. Uh, another, you know, everything pretty much has been said. But it was it was a good time for the coaches. It was a great time for the, the school, too. It put Mount Tahoma on the map. People begin to find out that where we really were and uh, what we were for and what we were about. And I think that's also important. And uh, the, the people you get to work with, the kids and the other coaches, and even the officials that we had to put up with, uh, uh, well, it was a great time. Well, thank you. All of you from Mount Tahoma High School, thank you, Coach Bowden. Ken Baker, Scott Norty, Dirk Pettit, Mike Vindovich, and Craig Meyer for sharing your memories of the greatest back-to-back -back seasons in the history of Tacoma High School football. All of us in this community have taken tremendous pride in our association with the Mount Tahoma High School football teams from 1979 and 1980. And this concludes today's presentation. And on behalf of Rainier Asphalt and Concrete and Shannon Sports Museum of Tacoma's Paris County, once again, I'm Jay Strickers, and we thank you for joining us on another edition of the Locker Room Chat. And in closing, let's all remember to always and in always be true to your school. Thank you, and good afternoon.